without further ado, the guest curator, Jesse Morass. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, so much. And let me just say, that's a horse Beth. I mean, uh, Rachel, that's a hard uh, talk to follow. She did amazing back there, and I love her work, and I'm a big fan of her work. Uh, these things are never really easy to do, but <laughs> um, I want to say that um, the reason I wanted to put this show together was because it, obviously these works are so beautiful. It, I have read somewhere that, that it says, a um, statement that says that abstract artwork, it has um, a degree of morale. And so, and with that being said, uh, it, it is suggesting that it has um, purity and order, simplicity, and um, spirituality. And when I see these works, that's, that's what resonated. And, uh, and also, uh, what I was really uh, engaged with in this, um, involved, I mean, interested in this work is that um, the way that these artists work in, in terms of the practice and the mathematic grid they use, uh, numerical systems that they have uh, come up with to create these works, um, most of which are very loose, and uh, some of them are very um, sim simple and um, universal, and other ones end up being more uh, loose uh, and soft, and so not at all. Um, uh, as one would see in terms of the grid that they work on, they're based on. So I wanted to bring this together because I wanted to um, show the diversity uh, that these uh, and, and the end results that these artists have, and many of them which start with a very simple uh, grid system, and and then result in something somewhat so uh, extravagant and complex. Um, so you have here uh, work by Rusty Scrooby. And it is a deconstruction, a reconstruction rather, of imagery, and it's a photographic work, um, and it's patterns. And you see pattern overall through all this entire uh, collection. I mean, the entire exhibition, and that's what res um, resonates through the entire show is the repeat of pattern. That's something that um, also caught my attention is the patternage that is resulted from the work. So, um, also textiles. Uh, a lot of the artists, most of the artists used current technology to um, design, to make their designs and then create them uh, by hand, whether they used a uh, floor loom or hand constructed them. I wanted to present various materials and surfaces and this is the result of it. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> I have comments. Yes. Well, so I see the color and the patternage, and I think of, um, well, the grid and the history of art, but also op art. Yes, absolutely. There's, yes. The deep well that, that is, exists within op art that has been overlooked. Exactly. All these artists owe the history of op art, hard edge art, abstract classicist. Um, and so they contribute to this um, the history and the critical discourse lineage of abstract art. And um, I think there are fine examples of that, and that's the reason why I wanted to bring them together. Um, and plus, I'm a fan of their work, and I'm good friends with both of them. So, um, yes? Were you friends with these artists before, or did you no, I met you seen their work and thought of making a show? Yes, exactly. Well, no, I, I, I met them because I liked their work and um, approached them and spoke about their work and asked questions about their work, and so that's what why I gravitated to them and then became friends and um, I, I felt they had a lot alike in terms of I mean visually uh, at first appearance no uh, you wouldn't think so but then the way they work uh, so earnestly and so committed and the quality and the construction is so precise uh, that it's uh, mind-boggling um, and it's very impressive so Jesse, yes. I, I was talking, I think it was Gabriel and maybe Tally before, and Tally was saying Susie Rosemarin's notebooks, I should, we should see them because there's these notebooks full of numbers and, and, and all of her planning for the pieces. Yes. And, I, and that made me think, I've got those too. And Gabriel said he has those too. And I bet yes. all these artists have just really amazing, complicated number systems, everything to keep track of. Yes, you're right. Um, 
the other uh, reason, I mean, the main reason, really, when I, I started to notice and, and as, as I spoke to these artists is that they all start with the numeric system and, um, or they have a, a sort of a repeated met methodological process that they use. And so they have that in common. Um, and Susie's, yes, of course, she also works, uh, deals a lot with mathematics and preciseness, and so does Rusty and um, um, Gabriel, of course. Um, but they all sort of end with very different um, end results. And so uh, that's also fascinating, whether it be, you know, pulsating surfaces, beautiful surfaces uh, that illuminate, that suggest uh, illumination, or, um, you know, uh, breaking down, deconstructing reality and reconstructing it into a single piece. Um, it's all fascinating in terms of how uh, their uniqueness and their um, intelligence resonates through their work. Um, and it's very individually done, so. Can I just say one thing? Yes. I love how you made mathematics something colorful and physical and beautiful to the show with the pattern it's based on artists' mathematical pension for making mathematical order out yes. of work. Yes. I don't, I don't know if we always connect art, in this kind of art, to math, but it's, that's what's going on. Exactly. And so there's this, this is order and, uh, that they start with, and it's, um, and it's, what happens is they repeat things, and a lot of these artists are repeating, whether it's a brush stroke or a method of, of the web and warp of, of weaving. You know, they have that affinity to each other in terms of how they work, and uh, yes. Can you talk about gray number seven? It's really the most fascinating one here because it makes the thing when I focus. She said once uh, uh, that, um, that that's sort of a, uh, happy accident, that her goal was not to uh, make uh, the work luminous, that that just happened, and so she, she you know, welcomed that. Uh, her goal was just to make, you know, this uniformed, repetitious, uh, um, um, symmetrical painting, but as she was taking the tapes off, uh, she noticed that it, it suggests light and, uh, and this uh, sort of, um, like I said, pulsating effect. It, these, all these works uh, have this suggesting of movement, and uh, whether it be by um, um, concentric circles or striations, weaves, um, patterns, gingham pattern, uh, et cetera. And so um, that's something that she's now adopted in her work, is to continue to have some luminosity. Jesse, yes. how many are uh, computer-dependent for? Um, most of them are, uh, with the exception of one artist, um, are computer-dependent, so. Does that one use a 3D projection? Rusty? <laughs> uh, no, not really. Uh, I mean, I have a, I use a free Google SketchUp uh, program to Im imagine a piece, but when it comes to doing it, uh, I mathematically know how each plane in there needs to be stretched <laughs> to have the image then come back as projected uh, in the final piece. So, so I make it look that way, but I go through a lot. I actually went through years of trying not to use a com computer and, and doing everything by hand, but I, I want that sense of perfection. And for me, it's a struggle between masculine and feminine and the, the control and, and the looseness. And um, so but now I definitely use computers. I'll use whatever devices I, I have to to get the piece done. Are those uh, components plastic or they? It's, it's photo paper. Those are hollow, oh. it's hollow little. Great. And Rusty actually engineered his own uh, mathematical process and how to create these pieces. Yeah, been, my, my process has yeah. been evolving. I grew up with a mom who's a, a grade school teacher and we had crafts, a craft room at home and then my dad was a math teacher and so I was always combining those things and uh, so I feel like I'm doing what I did when I was a kid and trying to figure out the math within life. Any more questions? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.